Hi folks, it's good to be with you and uh, love to everybody out there and um, it's really such a blessing to be with everybody and God bless you. I want to just give you some news report uh, and just give some thoughts uh, of the way things are going in my ministry and life and uh, just value your prayers. I'm quite tired, I did a lot of preaching last week and uh, so I'm quite tired so forgive me, I'm, I'm getting really tired. Um, I want to thank everybody for your prayers and for your support. Um, I've had a lot of encouragement from people who told me that they've been blessed by what I'm doing. Uh, the head of security in Manchester come down um, last week, uh, told me he's given his heart to the Lord and he was lifting up the cross and that was wonderful to see. Um, and lots of things have been going on. Uh, people have been coming asking for baptism. People have been professing salvation. And so there's been a lot of encouragement. So I thank you for prayers and finances. People have been giving me money. Um, people have been very generous recently. And uh, so I thank, for, thank everybody for their uh, giving, financial giving and support. So I appreciate that. And uh, people have been helping me in various practical ways in coming to help me serve the Lord in Manchester and around the country. And, and it's been great, it's been really encouraging. Um, things I've got planned in the next few weeks and months ahead. Um, it's already being arranged, but I'll be going to Holland sometime. Um, I don't want to give the full date on the internet, but uh, there will be a trip, another trip to Holland coming, um, which is not too far away. So there's a trip, um, it's going to be in a few months time, but there's a trip organised for to go to, to Holland. The plane ticket's been bought, so I'll be going to Holland. Uh, and uh, organizing, I've organised a trip to uh, Oxford. I'll be preaching in Oxford with a colleague. And uh, also uh, be having uh, Frank and Kadeen and the family uh, coming to stay uh, sometime in December. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, they're from Holland and they're going to come and stay and do mission work uh, with me here in, in England. So so those are some of the plans. We've got missionaries coming and staying. Um, we've going, got a trip organised um, to, to Oxford. And also a trip organised to, uh, to Holland. Um, like I said, people are getting saved, uh, people are, are getting encouraged and uh, we're getting lots of people, there's big crowds coming in Manchester to hear the preaching. Um, we're getting lots of people coming to the table, lots of people asking questions. Um, I, 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 I'm trying to have a break from Hyde Park, so I've not been to Hyde Park for a few weeks. I'm getting the itch to go again, but uh, I don't know if I will or not. I've said I don't want to. I want to have the winter time where I want to learn Arabic and learn to study other languages and things. But there might be a possible trip to Hyde Park. Uh, but generally speaking, my activities, I'm taking more of a rest uh, from Hyde Park. Um... Check out Bob the Builder at Hyde Park. He's doing an excellent job. And Lizzie and, and uh, Daniel and <coughs> others down there, they're doing an excellent job. So check them out. Check their videos out. Have a look at what they're doing. They're doing good, good work. Uh, and just to let you know, guys, that we're praying for you here in Manchester, that we love you, that we want with you, we have a heart for you, and we just love you, and we just, we're just so pleased and thrilled at what God's doing with you guys down there um, and we just pray for you all. Uh, Soko who does the filming, uh, Rory Gall Gallagher uh, who does filming, um, Daniel, uh, Lizzie, um, Bob the Builder and many many others down there. You're all doing a good job and we're praying for you and we're, we're, we're so delighted at what God's doing in your ministry. So, 
So, but for me, I'm taking a back seat for a, for a few weeks, for a few months. But you never know. There might be a, a, a surprise visit uh, over the next three months. You never know. Um, yeah, so I just want to thank everybody for the encouragement. There's been a lot of encouragement. and I thank everybody for supporting me in some way. Uh, those who contribute to coming out on a Saturday and and um, just all the the encouragement that people give me and support that people give me and the advice that people give me. I want to thank my home church, the pastors there that are an encouragement to me and help me and support me and I want to thank all the evangelists and pastors that do help me and I really appreciate that. Um, I just want to just share one or two things. Um, I do think that there is a need for those who work with me, who, who have been involved with Royal Blood Ministries, where we've gone down to Hyde Park and to um, to to Manchester. And I'm talking about a clo the close knit group that have worked with me that that we have to realise that the enemy is trying to destroy us, the enemy is trying to break us up and we've got to remain united and focused um, and if we're not focused and united uh, then the work's going to be weakened so for those who are very close to me and work with me at Hyde Park and work with me in Manchester you know, we need to focus on unity and maintaining unity um, and working together really as a team. Uh, and that comes to some things that I need to say to, to encourage people to, to work in a right way that, that if people are going to get involved in the ministry in Manchester particularly, um, whenever a brother makes a mistake, if you've got an issue with a brother, you need to take them privately, not rebuke them or tell them off publicly in front of everybody. It, it, it's not nice and it's not right, but above all, it's not biblical. You must take people aside if there's an issue and talk to them privately. Secondly, um, if a brother's in a conversation with someone, it's not wise to put in that conversation. But to ask if you want to, if they, if, if the fellow brother or sister is talking to somebody, you need to ask them, can I contribute to this conversation? Rather than just step in and then make a mess of things by not knowing what the conversation was about. Thirdly, People have to be mature and not lose their temper. Uh, sometimes it can get very um, intense when you've got big crowds. And if you've got a short fuse and you lose your temper when there's a big crowd, it would just cause a riot. So you've really got to be a person that is gentle and calm in talking to people. Um, Next thing, you need to be in a church or be looking to be in a church. If you're not in a church, you need to have a, you need to pray about being in a church. A church doesn't have to be a building. It can be a Bible study group or or something. But at least you're being mentored and at least you're, you're showing that you can work with people. Um, so you need to find a church or be in a church. Um... Yeah, if people get converted through the ministry of the table and the preaching, then you need to refer those converts to the team leader. And the team leader then will organise a Bible study with other people or um, put that person on to a local church. Um, too often people, uh, when someone gets converted, try to jump in and then... Uh, get them to have a Bible study with them or go to ch their church or whatever. But uh, I think it's only right if people are getting converted through 
through the preaching that we're doing and through the table work that you let us mentor these people and guide these people who are being converted through the work that we're doing um, because there's accountability there because sometimes people come and they've got mental issues and they need proper proper help, proper pastoral care and uh, and so there, there needs to be specialised training or specialist uh, expertise in dealing with certain people uh, such as uh, people who have, have mental issues really, mental illness um, it, it needs sensitivity and wisdom in how to talk to people and deal with people and very often some young Christian or some young worker will jump in and, and try to help a person and get a study organised but they haven't got the experience to deal with the issues and challenges and there's no accountability. So whenever converts are converted around the work if, of, of the preaching that we do or through the table then you need to let us as a team deal with these converts rather than you jumping in and saying things that are not going to be helpful. The next thing is, is that the ministry has a lot of conversations, a lot of discussions with people. So you have to be willing to allow the team to discuss with people. People come to the table and a lot of them ask questions. And when we go to the universities, when we go to Hyde Park, we do get involved in discussions. Uh, so, it, you know, we're, we're there to preach the gospel. Uh, but as we preach the gospel, if people ask us questions, we'll answer the questions. So you need to be prepared to at least respect the team that some people in the team will be discussing with people. And that comes to the other one as well. We're not there to argue theology. We're not there to argue with people in terms of causing uh, aggravation where we're, what we're arguing in the flesh. We're not there to do that. We're there to edify people. We're there to build the kingdom. And uh, very often uh, people can get into theological arguments and get heated and get sidetracked. Either they get into arguments with Jehovah's Witnesses or even Muslims at the tent. Or, um, and the, the arguments are in the flesh, they're not in the spirit, they're not sharing the gospel, ministry in life. So if you, you, you have to appreciate that we as a team are there to minister life and we're there to work together. And people running off arguing with people in the flesh and, and arguing with people who don't really want to know is going to hinder the work and, and spoil the flow of what the work's trying to be trying to do. Um, it's imperative basically that if people come to the table on a Saturday that we work for that time to promote the gospel together and I, I need your support to do that I need your help I need you to help me to do that and I, I, I really don't want to build a ministry around me and my, my name my personality and what I'm doing I want to proclaim the gospel and for us all to pull together and work together for the good of the glory of God and, and the gospel really so, so that's it really, I don't want to go on about it, but there's one or two other things. I think that, you know, I am conservative evangelical and I believe in the fundamentals, so you have to respect that. You have to respect that I'm from that perspective, that I'm a reformed Calvinistic preacher Um and so, when you're with me and, and Royal Blood Ministries, I don't want people to be arguing about theology, trying to push their particular theology on the group, you know. I think there should be a respect for what the Royal Blood Ministries group believe or hold to, and what I hold to, 
uh, and respect that. And very often I get young men who have been converted uh, and they've imbibed some kind of theology and they think they're, that they're bishops and they've only been saved a year or two years. And they think they're bishops and they're trying to push the theology onto everybody else on the team and cause arguments and it's not helpful. So if you join or associate with the table or join Royal Blood Ministries, you have to respect that I'm a conservative evangelical. Also, I believe in unity. I believe in unity amongst the fundamentals. I believe that every Christian, we should work together. Who are truly born again and who believe the fundamentals. So I tend to we'll work with Pentecostal ministers. I work with Pentecostals. I work with charismatics, I work with um, any Christian that holds to the fundamentals. Um, so, again, when you come to help at the table, you've got to respect that. You can't start arguing with somebody else. Somebody, you might have a Calvinist here, an Armenian here. A Zionist here and a non-Zionist here. A charismatic here and a non-charismatic. And we come together. I don't want to hear the Calvinist arguing with the Armenian, Armenian arguing with the Calvinist. Or the Zionist arguing with the Pentecostal or the Pentecostal arguing with the Zionist or whatever. I just want to see people proclaim the gospel. And if you can't get on with each other, you have to respect that the table is about working together. And if you don't want to work together, then you need to to respect what we're trying to do. So, so I'm just asking for support and help in that area. I don't want to go on about it. I don't want to labor it, but it's very difficult sometimes because we, we need to pull together more, work together more and have a more standard as a team and and I'm asking people out there if you're anywhere around the world today or anywhere in the UK if you want to join Royal Blood Ministries and get involved in that ministry then you're more than welcome to do so if you respect the principles that we hold to. Um, if you want to be associate with Royal Blood Ministries work alongside me, work alongside the table, work alongside me in Hyde Park work alongside me going around the country, you're welcome to do that. But you know, at least you now know some of my principles, some of the things that are important uh, in working in Royal Blood Ministries. I know people are not going to be fully happy about it, but you have to be straight with people. And the Bible says that uh, we're to conduct ourselves, it says that we're to do things decently in order. And it doesn't look good when you're preaching and you have 80 people and then you have five brothers arguing about some theological issue and yet the brothers, the other brothers are, uh, are trying to preach and reach out and talk to people. It doesn't look good when you're preaching and some brother can't handle the pressure and ends up arguing with the public and and then becoming like losing their temper. Um, it, it doesn't do the testimony any good. Uh, and it all comes down to because people have to respect that when you come to that table, there's some ground rules. Number one, we don't get angry. Number two, we don't rebuke each other in public, we do it in private. Number three, we don't argue about theology. Number four, we work together for that day as a team. Number five, we're conservative evangelical. We hold to the fundamentals of the faith. Number six, we don't cause division in theology. We're united for, for that day, even though we have different perspectives. Number uh, seven, we don't, um, we don't organize Bible studies without referring back to the team and uh, let the team organise the Bible studies with converts because what we'll do 
is we'll, we'll put them on to churches, pastors that can disciple them or we'll organise it where there are church leaders that will be able to give some spiritual mentor to people. These are the basic ground rules. Uh, and you need to be in a church or be looking for a church. These are the basic ground rules if you want to get involved in my blood ministries. And they're, they're just basic rules that every church, every ministry should have. Uh, and uh, if you can't buckle under these basic rules, then you're better off just taking a chill pill and doing your own thing. All right? But I pray that some of you would come forward. I pray that some young people would come forward. Some leaders would come forward more and more. And, and I pray that the, all those that do help would begin to focus more on, on, on being more of a team and really uh, pulling together in the next year or two for the sake of the gospel. Not for the sake of me, but for the sake of the gospel. So that's it really, uh, there's nothing else to report, apart from um, I've got a trip organised to Holland, uh, I'm looking forward to that, I love the folk in Holland, I just think they're amazing, I feel like my home's in Holland, I just miss the people there. Um, I'm looking forward to Frank and Kadeen coming, uh, they're, they're like family and um, they're coming and I'm looking forward to that. And also I've got a trip to Oxford with a brother called Alan and I'm really looking forward to that. That's going to be exciting. Um, and it's been tremendous. The work is really taking off in Manchester. People are coming to the table and something really is happening in Manchester. But it's how to harness it and how to develop the work. Uh, I need a lot of prayer and a lot of support and a lot of help from people to harness something that's going on in the air. I don't know what it is, but there are crowds coming, people are getting saved, people are coming to the table, but I need prayer because the enemy is trying to get in and spoil the work. And the other thing as well, I don't want it to, I don't want to be known as a personality. I'm beginning to be well known all over the country. People everywhere I go, People recognise me and people say hi. Um, honestly, they do. People just from nowhere just say, oh, I recognise you and they say hi to me. But I don't want it to be about me and, and my personality. I really want to get a group of people together and build a team. And I don't want it to be about me. I want it to be about the gospel and about proclaiming Jesus and getting people saved. So it's imperative that I get support so then the people that come and help me, I can empower them in their ministries and encourage them in their ministry and I can take a step back and let them get on with the preaching, let them get on with the, the evangelism, let, get, let them get on with the apologetics. That's the aim, you know. I really don't want to build... A ministry around me. Um, some people have done that. Some people have built big ministries where, where it's about their ministry, really about their name. And I don't want that. I want to. I want to lift Christ up. I want to see people saved. And I want to build a team. And and it's and it's becoming a bit difficult because I'm becoming really well known. People are, are saying to me in Manchester, all over the place, they're, they're shaking my hand, they're saying hi. Uh, I mean, so many people uh, this Saturday came up to me and shook my hand. People who I've never seen before, they just shake my hand and they, they just thank me for preaching and they, they recognise me. And, and I want to build the kingdom. I don't want to build something around me and my personality. But I want to empower people to use their gifts. I want to encourage them to you to build their ministries and, and, and for them to serve the Lord, for them to be preachers, for them to um, to be the evangelist, you know. So I need your prayers that 
some people will come forward who, who recognise the ministry, want to support the ministry, and who, who I can empower and encourage to, to go forward in their ministries, uh, in, in serving the Lord. Uh, so that's it really, there's nothing else to report. I, um, I'm very, very concerned at the moment uh, with the way Britain's going. Uh, there was a student recently who um, there was a student recently who was convicted uh, excuse me he, he was doing a degree or an MA and uh, he was debating on Facebook concerning the gay rights agenda. And the university took him off the course, excuse me, and he took the court, took them to court and he lost the fight really. Um, and I'm very, very disturbed by that because I think it, 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 it's a catalyst for really the destruction and the end of free speech concerning Christianity really. Uh, I think it's very, very serious. I think it's one of the most serious... It is the serious thing to happen to our country, as far as I'm concerned, for the last four or five hundred years. I think this is the biggest event in our country for many, many years. And I think um, it's a precedent, really, where basically free speech has been taken away concerning Christianity in, in our country. And I'm very disturbed about it, very, very disturbed. And so at the moment, I'm going to be seeking prayer, praying a lot, uh, seeking the Lord a lot, because this is a very dangerous and difficult time that we live in. And uh, that's it, really. Uh, there's nothing else to report. Um, I've got uh, books that I've been reading. I've uh, been reading... Uh, and studying quite a lot by Greg Banson uh, on presuppositional apologetics. And uh, I might make a video on that now and just wrap it up. So thank you for listening and, and appreciate your support. I'm going to pray. And um, ask the Lord's blessing on your lives. And uh, God bless. Father, we just thank you for this day and I thank you for all those that have been listening to this video today. And I just pray for their ministries and the work that they're doing that you bless them, Lord. And I just pray that as I uh, pray right now, I just pray that each family who hears these words, each family would be blessed, each family would know your grace, each family would know your love. And I just pray for each person today that you are blessed. Every single person who watched this video, who's represented right now, that you are blessed for your glory. And so, Lord, we commit everything to you, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. 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 God bless you. I'm going to make one or two short videos because I'm getting a bit tired. So, God bless you, I hope. I'm just sharing my heart, heart to heart, giving you a few thoughts about ministry and I uh, hope you hope, hope that blesses you. God bless you. Take care.